Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and my colleagues. Um, here we are. The government uh, has shut down. It's amazing some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle have uh, political amnesia, uh, sort of revisionists of history. Uh, let's just look at some of the facts. <laughs> uh, the other side of the aisle, the Democrats took over 2008. We haven't had a budget federal budget since 2008. The only way we got a budget uh, this year uh, from the United States Senate was a provision that the Republicans passed to no budget, no pay. Uh, we had to force them by passing a law and embarrassing them to pass a budget. How did we get in this situation? And this is, a, this is a very critical financial situation for the United States of America, for all Americans. It, they, the shutdown is very unfortunate, but sometimes you have to take dramatic steps to move forward. We got in this situation by the other side controlling the House, the Senate, and the White House in 2008, went on a, a spending binge unprecedented in the history of mankind in any government. The first year they spent more than one and a half trillion dollars more than we took in. 2008 to uh, current, we went from nine trillion dollars deficit to 17 trillion, nearly doubled it in five years, every year spending out of control. We've put the brakes on a bit. This is about funding the government for the, this, this next year that starts today. In two weeks, we will reach the maximum limit of the indebtedness of the United States. We can't let the United States become a Greece or a deadbeat nation. But stop and think they're going to ask for another trillion, $900 billion in debt and deficit uh, limits for the United States. At some point, you have to say enough is enough. Now, I Googled uh, last night to see my comments on the shutdown. I put in Micah shutdown. And uh, sometimes we, we forget what's happened. In, in August of uh, 2011, uh, I uh, chaired the Transportation Committee, came to the floor. The, the other thing had controlled this, the House, the Senate, the White House, and they could not pass an FAA bill. They did 20 extensions costing millions and millions of dollars leaving FAA, an important agency, in turmoil. Finally, I said as chairman, enough is enough. And I sent over an extension to Mr. Reed that cut out, it was a clean extension, except it cut out his $3,720 per airline ticket subsidy. I'm not kidding. In Nevada, one of his airports was getting $3,720. So rather than take that, that we had a partial shutdown of FAA. Recall that. Just Google it. You'll see. I was called the shutdown king. For two weeks, they pillared me. They called me an extortionist. They said I was a one-man Tea Party uh, terrorist cell. They, called, uh, they accused me of holding a gun to the Senate's head. Uh, we did pass an FAA bill. We got an important part of our government working again. I don't like to take those tough measures. We've tried to be reasonable. None of us on our side of the aisle voted for Obamacare. The other side voted for it, and they told us, uh, they told us uh, uh, that we could read the bill afterwards and we'd find out what's in it. We found out what's in it. And we tried, and we voted more than 40 times to repeal it. We tried in a reasonable fashion. We sent over three times proposals to do some of the things that even the president has done, uh, and that's <laughs> delaying uh, mandates. And he carved out exceptions for uh, everybody except for individuals. So here we are. Uh, they don't want to compromise. They didn't, want it. they didn't show up for work on Sunday at all. They came in yesterday. I show up for work at 2 o'clock when things are going to heck in a handbasket. 
and then reject uh, proposals. So we can't revise history. We've got to work together. We've got to get this done. We've offered a conference to sit down, and we can get the job done. Uh, sometimes it's tough. Thank you. General